Right? What is the God that you act as though he, she, it exists? And what is the, what, what is the God-shaped thing I must have in my life to prevent me from being a, quote, real atheist? Well, okay, first of all, I have to point out that there's no possible way I can answer both those questions in two minutes. Well, it's the, it's, it's the same question. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, what, is, okay. it, like, what, what do you mean by God? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you some of the things that I mean by God. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh, we, we do have to get the questions. Maybe we're going to do this tomorrow. Yeah, maybe this is where we, we start. Oh, God. Well, that was a pretty resounding well, maybe that's no. A, it so. seems like that constitutes an audience question, wouldn't you say? All right, I tell you what, I tell you what. Let's, yeah. um... Let's do this, but let's be deliberate about time. Okay, okay. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read some things that I wrote because it's so complicated that I'm not sure that I can just spin it off the top of my head, and so you'll have to excuse me. So, and what I'm going to do is sort of paint a picture by, by, by highlighting different things. So now I already made one point here. I, m I made the point that part of the conception of God that underlies the Western ethos is the notion that whatever God is is expressed in tr the truthful speech that rectifies pathological hierarchies. And that isn't all it does. It also confronts the chaos of being itself and generates habitable order. That's, a, that's the metaphysical proposition. And that that's best conceptualized as at least one element of God. And so I would think about it as a transcendent reality that's only observable across the longest of time frames, the longest of iterated time frames, to your point. So, so okay, so here's, here's some propositions, and they're complicated, and they need to be unpacked, so I'm just going to read them, and you're, that'll have to do for the time being. So, God is how we imaginatively and collectively represent the existence and action of consciousness across time as the most real aspects of existence manifest themselves across the longest of time frames, but are not necessarily apprehensible as objects in the here and now. So what that means in some sense is that you have conceptions of reality built into your biological and metaphysical structure that are a consequence of processes of evolution that, that occurred over unbelievably vast expanses of time and that structure your perception of reality in ways that it wouldn't be structured if you only lived for the amount of time that you're going to live. And that's also part of the problem of deriving values from facts, because you're evanescent and, and you can't derive the right values from the facts that port portray themselves to you in your lifespan, which is why you have a biological structure that's like 3.5 billion years old. So God is that which eternally dies and is reborn in the pursuit of higher being and truth. That's a fundamental element of hero mythology. God is the highest value in the hierarchy of values. That's another way of looking at it. God is what calls and what responds in the eternal call to adventure. God is the voice of conscience. God is the source of judgment and mercy and guilt. God is the future to which we make sacrifices and something akin to the transcendental repository of reputation. Here's a cool one if you're an evolutionary biologist. God, <laughs> God, God is that which selects among men in the eternal hierarchy of men. So, you know, men arrange themselves into hierarchies and then men rise in the hierarchy. And there's principles that are important that determine the probability of their rise. And those principles aren't tyrannical power. They're something like the ability to articulate truth and the ability to be competent and the ability to make appropriate moral judgments. And if you can do that in a given situation, then all the other men will vote you up the hierarchy, so to speak, and that will radically increase your reproductive fitness. And the operation of that process across long expanses of time looks to me like it's codified in something like the notion of God the Father. It's also the same thing that makes women, men attractive to women, because men, women peel off the top of the male hierarchy, and the question is what should be at the top of the hierarchy, and the answer right now is tyranny as part of the patriarchy, but the real answer is something more like the ability to use truthful speech in the service of, let's say, well-being. And so that's, that's something that operates across tremendous expanses of time, and it plays a role in the selection for survival itself, which makes it a fundamental reality. Jordan, if so, I can I just cut in here with one question. Stop, uh, stop with that for now. What? So I, I was not hearing in that list of attributes a God who 
could care if anyone masturbated. Uh, I was not hearing a God who... Depends on what else is stopping you from doing, Sam. Uh, well, uh, sorry, I, I missed that. Wait, 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 I said it depends on what else it's stopping you from doing. Well, yeah, okay, so it's, it's yeah, important but to live. But seriously. It's, it's important to do something other than masturbate. Yes. Uh, yes, which, is, which, which actually yeah. constitutes a problem yeah, which is, for many which, people. Which is harder than it sounds. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not hearing a, a, a God, a personal God, who can possibly hear anyone's prayers, much less answer them. Right, and um, so I'm just I'm wondering what percentage of religious people who who would say, "Oh yeah, I believe in God, and it's the most important thing in my life." Uh, what percentage of those religious people do you think have in mind a God of the sort you just described? I don't and, know, Sam. It's a good question because when I go talk to people, when I when I talk to people online and use exactly this terminology, millions of people listen. So it's not so yeah, obvious well, which what percentage of no, people see it this way. It's, it may can, be that they have the intuitions, but they haven't been articulated well. I mean, this is, this is the problem. Uh, this is what worries me about this. So, you, I mean, you, you, you could do the same thing with the idea of, a, of ghosts, right? So, so people traditionally have believed in ghosts. It's, a, it's an archetype, you might say, the ghost. Survival of death is certainly an archetype. And, and we know what most people most of the time mean when they say they believe in ghosts. And I say, I don't believe in ghosts. And you say, no, no, you, you do believe in ghosts. Ghosts are your relationship to the unseen. That's a ghost. So you, you have a, a, a new definition of ghost that you're putting in, in the place provided which I have to say, well, of course I have a relationship to the unseen, so uh, yeah, I guess I do believe in ghosts. You know, you, you win that argument. Uh, but that simply isn't what most people mean by a ghost. Most yeah, people mean... Yeah, but you mean, can't use that simplified argument about my conception but, but, of ghosts as an analogy for the propositions th th that I just put th forward. This is what I see you do. I mean, maybe you have more to say on the topic of God, but this is what I hear you doing with God. You have defined the God that most people believe in, and we know this is the God that most people believe in. I was in. asked what God I believed in. Not yes, no, but I'm, a, I'm asking you what percentage, <laughs> yes, but you, you by shifting the, the definition, you have robbed the, the noun, the traditional noun of its traditional meaning, and you're giving, you're imparting to people hey, a wait sense. A se wait a second, wait, wait a wait. second, people. I, I'm not so what sure What do you mean this. by traditional meaning? Look, it's one of the one of the elemental claims in the Old Testament is that you're not even supposed to utter the name of God because by defining it too tightly, you lose its essence. And so let's not be talking about what the classical definition of God is here, okay? It's a but, historical non-starter. Okay, the, and there's plenty of religions on. that can make I, can it... Can I check in with the audience? Uh, is the audience all right with us continuing down this road? No. Okay. 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 So can I, can I jump in yeah. here? You're sacrificing so, your Q&A. So, yeah, that, that, it is at the expense of Q&A. Okay. That's, that's what you're giving out. Yeah. But I think it's probably worth okay. it. Um, so, let me say, Sam, um, I do not believe in a supernatural God. But the God that I heard Jordan just describe, I do not have any difficulty understanding why he might care if you masturbate. And I also don't have any trouble figuring out how he might answer yeah. prayers. Well, well, tell me more then. Well, I, I can tell you, I can tell you, I can tell you how a prayer might be answered. Okay, but the, these are... Well, so, it's specific, well, so, so you could let me do that. You, you, so you, it'll be interesting. So I'm not Jordan. We've not talked about this. If I he, heard an answer from him that actually would satisfy me as to what the mechanism of action might be, that, that, that'd be pretty interesting. And if he can tell me what I heard... Uh, I, I think it would, be, it would suggest that, that we're not just making up stories here. Okay, so, so, so and I, you might like this, you maybe not, but, well, it, it's possible. Okay, so imagine that, okay, so let's imagine that hellish situation that you laid out, okay? Uh, but but let's, let's put the extra twist in it, because one of the things that we both decided, I think, was that you also have to build in the intent into that. So let's say the hell that we're talking about isn't the victim of the terrible massacres that you, you, you laid out in the jungle story, but a perpetrator. Okay, so someone who's actually acted in a malevolent manner, truly malevolent manner. Okay, 
or, or maybe perhaps we wouldn't have to take that extreme case. We could say, well, perhaps you've decided that, any of you, you've decided that you've seriously done something wrong, okay, and that you, you want to get away from hell, you want to make things better. Okay, so here's, here's an exercise you can try. So here, what you do is, is, is you sit on the edge of your bed and you say, okay, what I did was wrong. And, and you have to really believe this, right? So you've thought about it, it's killing you. It's killing you. So now you're penitent and you're confessing, let's say. And you're confessing to yourself as much as to anyone. And you say, I really want to know what I did wrong. And I really want to know what I could do to put it right. And I'm willing to accept any answer that will manifest itself to me. You try that. See what happens. Well, I, you, that's a prayer that will be answered, and it won't be answered in the way that you want it to be answered. I can bloody well tell you that. Okay, but, but that... Well, what are you communicating that, with? That, you, that what is, are you communicating with when no, you do no, that? No, no, that, that is something that... That is a process that I'm familiar with. It doesn't require any supernatural explanation, and it certainly... It certainly doesn't require that we imagine that any of our books were dictated by the creator of the universe. I didn't say that it so, required any supernatural oh, no, okay, no, but, or that it required the my book. Concerns. I was asked to provide an instance of prayer that worked, and that's what I did. I didn't okay, do anything that, other than that. That's, un, that's fully understandable in terms of human psychology. And it's not understandable because we don't know where the answer comes from. Well, we don't know where anything comes from. That's true. Yeah, okay, so, so yeah, but... That doesn't, that doesn't open the door. I mean, we, one, one thing we can know with absolute certainty is that, that whoever wrote the Bible didn't know either. 